and welcome. I am No Coffee, No Life. Today we're going to answer the question, can you actually put a basement in your camp? Now, stick with me here for a minute. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I've been thinking about it since that one house that I did during Halloween, where it had a basement and it already came with it. And I was thinking, you know, there has to be a way to do this. And I think I've done it. And we're going to see that today in this build. Now, if you don't know where I am right now, I will tell you, I am just outside of Welch, west of it, right near this wrecked school bus that you can see right behind me. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the build. Now, as you can see, you can't get any more immersive than a ditch by the road. This is our starting point. This is where we're going to be placing our basement. Now I have put the first piece here. We're going to expand out from it. It's at the perfect level and you can tinker with it, but I have it set to where when I finally build that first floor, it is going to be flush with the ground level. And it takes a little time. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you about that. It will take a bit of time to tinker with this. But once again, you have the patience to do this. You certainly do it, especially after this weekend. You definitely have the patience because I don't know what they were doing. I guess they're getting ready to roll out that free fallout first week or whatever, but they hosed the game for a good long time. I mean, I couldn't access a good chunk of the build menu while they were doing whatever they were doing. So if you were building this weekend, my sympathies to you because man, it was rough. It was really rough. So we're gonna place these and it's gonna be three by three in the basement area. And then we're gonna have obviously our first floor, but we're concerned with this section first. Now where I have this concrete block, you can't actually put a wooden foundation in that area, it won't let you. So this is the beginning of our first floor. I have to close off this section. Otherwise, we're not gonna have anything closing that. So we're gonna put that first concrete foundation, the second right behind it. And then we're going to place this concrete foundation once I, I place another just behind it. And there we go. We've closed off our basement area on this side. This, these are the walls. And this is what it looks like from the ground level. <laughs> so everything is pretty much flush and it looks like a chunky U shape or C prefer. Now I put a standard stair there. You could put whichever one you want. And I'm putting my second floor foundation pieces. And there's a little gap, but that's okay. We, we can live with that. I can live with that. I'm just going to align these floorboards so that they're all going to end up going the same direction. If you're not changing them out to a specific carpet, it, it doesn't really matter. But if you are a stickler for how the floors are supposed to look, you might want to put them all the same way. So once they're all placed in the same direction, we're going to put our exterior walls up. Now I can't put it right there. It won't let me put a wall right there for whatever reason. Who can say? It says it's floating even though there's a foundation there. So we're going to solve that really quick. It's, uh, it's magical. Well, not really, but you'll see. And there we go. We've got a, a concrete foundation there just temporarily. And then we're going to slap this wall down. And once it finally places, we're going to go and remove that foundation. There we go. And yes, you your eyes did not deceive you. There was a second floor foundation there and it still let me place a concrete foundation and then remove it. We're gonna move on now to closing the gaps in the foundations because we have a number of sections for the bottom half for our basement that need to be closed off so that it looks like one solid building, not a structure that's partially floating in the landscape. So I'm just going to come to the back of the building and you can see the wooden foundations. And we have to put a wall right where that gap is. And to do that, I'm placing this concrete foundation here using a similar method to what I did with that fort in the cranberry bog when I used a porch piece to snap to the side of the cliff. I'm doing the same with this and it it senses that there's the ground there and it will let me place 
so that I can use a catwalk once I snap it to the side of this concrete foundation. I can then snap a full wall piece right up against the side of the concrete foundation and close off that gap. And then it'll be fine. That section of the basement will be closed off. It won't be this gaping hole in our basement and everything will be fine. <laughs> I just have to adjust this concrete block. And you'll, you'll have to do that as well if you're building here and you're closing off this area. You're gonna take your time adjusting this foundation piece so that it's perfectly aligned and its corner is matching up. All we have to do now is use our handy dandy catwalks. Then snap on the full wall and you're done. You can take off that catwalk and continue on closing off the rest of the basement. As I've been babbling, you've seen me putting these walls up and the and closing up the sides using the catwalk. It's gonna produce this really nice outer wall for this building where it looks like this corrugated metal has kind of been stacked on the sides of the building, which is nice. It lends itself to the, the rustic, worn down industrial look that the ash heap has and buildings that are inside the ash heap tend to look really, really run down and beaten. I'm going to close off the area here where the staircase is. This is going to be a separate section from the main living area. And as you can see, I'm using these rusty brown carpets for the bedroom area that's off the main part. Closed it off, double walled it. And so this is what it looks like in the interior. I have set aside the kitchen area. I've changed the tile using the Guild of Antiquities um, tile set for that foundation. It's in that same color range as everything in the ash heap. I'm gonna finish putting the walls up in the front. This is gonna be the porch area that I'm closing off right now. I'm going to burn the lower walls as soon as I'm done setting up this front end. Here they go. All the, these front walls are down and now we have our porch and the one upper portion of the roof. And the, so we have the upper roof done over the porch. We're now finishing up the front end of the porch with these guard posts, a mix of the concrete and the wood. And there it is. That's what it looks like right now. Now for the rest of the roof, we're going to get the rest of it done. I only have the stuff covering the porch. I'm going to make this upper attic area. I'm going to get ahead of myself and burn this because I forgot that, hey, I have to put stuff up here, but I'm going to put these angled roof pieces over here first so that they're taken care of. I'm going to repair it. Now fill up the attic with stuff, then burn that stuff and the roof piece. I'll fix that wall. But now I can place that roof piece and get the, the walls up and finish roofing this camp. I was going to keep it at the same level as that little tower up front, but I decided not to. Instead, I use the angled roof pieces here, and I'm just gonna close up the center with flat roof pieces. Of course, I have to take this one out so that I can put the center piece in. Thanks, Bethesda. Gonna patch that up again. And now, this is what the building looks like. It has its roof, it has its walls up, just to finish some of the interior walls now. And we're almost, to the end. <laughs> I'm gonna repair this roof over that makes our attic. Both these roof pieces are part of the attic, so we're gonna take a look and see now. Yes, it's all cluttered up there. It's got a safe. I don't know how that thing sits up there because that roof certainly shouldn't be able to hold the um, safe with the materials we're using, but whatever. Hey, you know, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a uh, safe, a very heavy safe, um, 
sitting in the attic. I, I can suspend the disbelief. And there's our power. I'm going to add two more. You're going to see in the final build, there's actually three solar panel generators up here. But for right now, uh, there's only one. I'm going to run my power conduits along the center of the roof so that I can have power throughout the entire building, um, including power that that I need to feed to things that require direct power because I do use items that require direct power in this build. Or more specifically, I'm using the vendors that you get for free in the game. The just regular old freestanding, you can plunk them against a wall, vendors. None of the registers, the regular one. And that needs direct power. I mean, I suppose you could leave it without direct power, but I'm not going to do that in this build. I'm going to rush through changing the walls out because it's a matter of personal preference. The way I mix and match these double walls might be different from how you go about setting up your double walls. You don't have to follow what I did. You can make your own choices in that regard. And that's good. It's, it's good for us all to make different choices in our camp builds. Nothing, you know, there's, there's no wrong choice when you're building in the wasteland. Everything is a good choice. Well, maybe some things are better than others, but that is also a personal preference. <laughs> personal preference that will not be discussed further in this video. The wasteland has room for everyone in all kinds of buildings, so let us move on now, shall we? Oh look, a convenient shutdown. Those those came back. Did you notice? I noticed. That was so fun. Uh, a shutdown. Everyone loves that, right? And here's the build right now. So I'm showing you one last thing before we see the reveal of this camp, and it's the fireplace that I built for this camp. Now, I didn't want to use just a standard fireplace. The fireplace that I'm adjusting is from the scoreboard. I think one or two scoreboards back anyways. I am combining it with this monument that you can actually get from the Holiday Scorch. So this holiday season, keep an eye out for it because you might want to do what I'm about to show you. This fireplace only goes so far out and I want its little back feet to be at the very edge of the front of this monument for what I want to do. And what I want to do is merge it into the monument so that I can have this fireplace with a stone background. Because if you, and I don't have footage of this, but if you go over to the Welch train station, right behind our robot vendor is going to be a fireplace in disrepair, clearly. But it's like this white fireplace with wood running through it. It's like a, you know, a handmade old timey fireplace. And it's kind of got these rounded edges and it's cool. And it's something that Bethesda, if you're listening, you should give us because, oh my God, I I'm sorry. It's a cool fireplace. Go check it out. It is neat. Anyways, this besides the point. So we have this fireplace here kind of perched up on top of the monument. It's not able to be positioned far enough out that it will avoid that bowl and the lip of the base of the monument. So it needs help. And it needs help in the form of one of those dirty welcome mats. I'm going to use the plain brown one that has no markings on it whatsoever because I want to use that welcome mat to trick the game into letting me place that fireplace even further out so that its little back legs are right at the edge of the top of the monument. You're going to see me do this. I'm going to bring the mat up to the top, I'm going to place it, and then I'm going to adjust it so that it's moved forward and it is over the lip that's at the base. So we're going to take this mat, we're going to slide it over and make sure that it's, when you're doing this picture, it's aligned. Don't have it off kilter and not perpendicular because then you're going to have a really weird looking fireplace. Take your time doing this because this isn't easy. This is a pain, considerable pain, but it's worth it in the end. So that's as far as it's going to go. So now we're going to move our fireplace. So there it is. It's up on top. And now we have to push its little feet to the very edge. Eventually they'll get there and then everything will be golden from this point forward and line up 
your fireplace. Make sure that it's in the middle, that its little legs are on either side of the edge of that mat. Now you're going to merge this and don't rush merging this or the game will glitch out and it'll register that there are like two of them there at the same time and that you can't merge it any further. So take your time. I'm gonna speed this up because you don't want to see like 20 minutes of this thing merging. So here we are. Here's our magical fireplace set in the stone and ready to be placed in the camp. We're gonna walk it into the camp and place it where it's going to live inside the camp in our, our living room area. I've already got a couch there. I've moved the walls. We're gonna place it and this is the building life here constantly spending 40 minutes on one object so now we're going to place now that it's in its its location we're going to place the walls back just putting them in because apparently you can put a, a wall with a door frame there and it will let you and it won't complain it won't say oh no you can't put that there no it'll actually let you put the walls in without any issue it, it, I guess the monument it just doesn't exist for the game when you go to put walls there why it, it does this why it will let me put two walls a double wall right here with this fireplace sitting here I have no idea and yet we can't do that in other instances with other objects that are significantly smaller than a giant stone monument and a fireplace I don't know but hey look there's the fireplace and if you look on the other side it actually looks like a bass relief it's kind of cool with those the two guns and then you can see some of the stars popping out through the concrete and the wood it looks really nice it adds that much more texture to this small room and here it is the completed build with its grognak aficionado minding the front cluttered it up a little bit you could always add more there is plenty of room at this site to add exterior items there's no shortage of space and it is fairly level save for the back end <laughs> but we know that already and there's not many mobs to bother you the only thing i ever saw here were rad rats throughout the entire building process but let's take a look inside now. As you can see, I've got our fender out front so that anybody passing down the road can make some purchases. Let's open the door and go inside. I've put up a junk wall as sort of a barrier between us and the living room. We're gonna go into the bedroom area. Here's a little space between the entryway and the bedroom. I've just kind of cluttered up open this up so we can see the inside of this room. I've got a desk, a weapon stand. Here's the completed area where we saw this is the back end of the fireplace and I've decorated it as like a little mantle with a clock on the front of it to decorate it further and some stuff on the stone ledge. Got the inside of this with a bed chair and table and some bookshelf and it's it's nice it's cluttered and you've got this lovely view of the giant crane out back now onward to the rest of the camp fairly compact even though it is bigger than the last one as you can see you know it's a warning don't touch my stuff close this up and take a look at the rest and then we'll take a look at this kitchen and it's a small kitchen. I've got, I'm using one of these um, signs to have a little bit of a block between the front entrance and the kitchen. And we've got a little seating area with some stools and they've got the attic space up there. It's all cluttered. I'm using this fashion out wallpaper uh, because it is nice and weathered, even though it suffers from the same thing most of the wallpapers and the floors do. It has that kind of gloss to it that it probably shouldn't. Here's the living room, the, the den area with the 
fireplace and the sofa and the walls kind of close it in a little bit and I've got some pictures on the walls, stuff on the mantle. Let's go to this back room, which has some of our workbenches in it and a light. I've cluttered it with random stuff that fits with that workshop space. You know, there are a lot of things in the power connection category that you can use to clutter up your space. I know that they eat a lot of copper and ceramic, but they are worth making and using as decorations. I've got mole oh, rat heads <laughs> all along the walls. I've got the rest of my stations down here. It fits, it looks great in here. I've got a cluttered shelf and we have a mine shaft. And that's it, that's the entirety of the camp. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I enjoyed making this build and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something from it, more importantly. If you like what you see here, then click on that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're aware when new videos release. But until next time, happy building in the wasteland.